Hey, welcome. Welcome to Five Gentle Flow. So go, if you have something like a pillow, bolster, blanket, something like that, go ahead and get yourself set up. We'll begin in a seated pose. Um, there's a few people that are coming in. So I'll just let them in as well. Let's see. Oh, somebody dropped off. Wonderful Zoom. <laughs> well, that extra person came in. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're going to begin in a seated pose. So find yourself some comfy cushion to sit on, either blanket, bolster, pillow, whatever feels right for today. Um, and then find a little cross-legged or legs uncrossed position. I'll go ahead and mute everybody. And then if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. <clears throat> Once you find your spot, um, make sure you have, like, if you're wanting, if you get cold easily, um, like a blanket or like a sweatshirt, because this practice is pretty slow. And I know that sometimes it just feels nice to be cozy when you're moving your body. So feel free to grab anything you need here. No rush. And then once you settle down, you can bring your knees to your, or your hands to your knees and close your eyes and just begin to just feel into the body and take some deep breaths. So whenever you're ready, deep inhale, open mouth, exhale, deep inhale, open mouth, exhale. Feel free to close your eyes or have a super soft gaze. Deep inhale here. Open mouth, exhale. Two more times. Deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Last time on your own. And just begin to let yourself have a neutral, easy, everything kind of like natural breath. So basically effortless. So as we find this just effortless breath, let's check in with the body. So eyes are still closed. Let's wiggle our toes, flex the muscles in our legs and then release them. So do that again. Let's wiggle the toes, like scrunch the toes, scrunch your muscles a lot and then release. And just feel that settling action where, you know, your legs are like kind of heavy into the mat. And then let's focus on the pelvic floor. So give that a squeeze, a booty squeeze, and then release. And then one more time, really squeeze, 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 and then release. And really try to just settle here, feel that extra little touch of the mat, like on the side of your thigh or your pelvic floor area, wherever, wherever it's at. Let's just focus on that grounding feeling. And then bring your hands to the belly and give it a squeeze and some love and say, thank you belly for existing on my body. I appreciate you. You hold in all my organs and you digest all my food and I just, oh, you're amazing. I don't know what I would do without you. Don't ever change a thing. And then leave your hands on the belly and just like feel your breath, just naturally kind of letting it, your belly expand and then get a little bit smaller as you exhale. And let's bring your focus to the spine. So option to leave your hands on the belly to just kind of feel that belly move a little bit or move them back down to your knees. And let's imagine a long string at the base of the spine and it goes all the way to the top of our head. And this lengthens that spine. It rolls our shoulders down and back. And we just feel that lift in our chest. Let's wiggle our fingers and flex the muscles in our arms and then release. And do that one more time. Wiggle the fingers, flex again, really, really flex and then release. That flex allows your muscle to relax. 
relaxes after you let it go. So it just is like this, this muscle flexion that just naturally happens in the human body. So as we sit here and we feel into the spine and we feel our muscles all kind of like settle in and we're, we've got that long spine. Let's focus on the breath a little bit and we can try a couple of different types of breathing today. So with our eyes closed, let's begin with some Nadi Shodana. And we take our right hand and lift it up so the palm is facing our face. So it's like you tuck in your ring in your pinky finger. So it's three fingers facing your face. You tap on that third eye or that space between your eyebrows with the index finger. And you're left with your middle finger and your thumb finger where they could have access to your nostrils. So Nadi Shodana is essentially nostril breathing. We isolate each side of the nostril, just bringing focus to our breathing. So let's begin by, un we're not covering any nostrils. Let's just take a deep inhale through the nose and an exhale through the nose. Cover the left nostril, inhale with the right. Cover the right, exhale the left. Inhale through the left. Cover the left, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Cover the right, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Cover the left, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. And then let's go ahead and take our own rounds. Just a few more rounds on your own. On that next exhale, we release our hand, bring it back down to the knees, and let's take a deep inhale together. Open mouth, exhale. Ah. One more time, deep inhale. This time we make a really loud noise or just louder than before. Open mouth, almost like a lion. Ah. Go ahead and come into a smooth breath, something that feels easy. And let's reflect. So taking the time to just feel your nose, just kind of like relax, not having to do any work right now. And then let's remember how we felt while we were doing Nadi Shodana. And if we noticed if one side was more clogged than the other, like, Usually if the right side is blocked, then it means you need more rest. If your left side is blocked, it means you need more activity. If both sides are blocked, it just means you need more balance. And if both sides were open, it just means that you are balanced. Of course, this is like an old wives tale. <laughs> if you found that the focus on the breathing felt very like something was bubbling up, anxiousness, stress. Am I doing this right? Am I moving correctly? I'm listening, but then when I went on my own, it was kind of stressful or was it like very like focused? Like I got this, I'm gonna be really focused in this breath and I got it, like where were you? And just kind of think about it for a moment. And I just want to remind you that like wherever you are at is good. <laughs> that type of breathing can really um, bring up some like insecurities, anxiousness, stress, kind of like let you know exactly where you're at. <laughs> so if that came up, then maybe that's where you're at right now. Maybe not. And then the lion breath, let's just take a moment to recap on that. Did you feel silly? Did you want to try it again? 
Did it feel releasing after all that congestion? How did it feel? Begin to seal the lips and let's find the ujjayi. So this is that breath of life. So as we sip in the air, we count to four, five or six. And as we exhale, we find that same count, four, five or six. If we inhale for four, we exhale for four. If we inhale for five, we exhale for five. Finding that ujjayi breath. So we're slowing down our breath. This should kind of sound like an ocean wave, just rocking back and forth and allowing you to just kind of move within the breath. Like you can kind of feel that heat cultivating in the back of your throat, almost like if you were to bring a mirror up to your nose, it would fog it. As you find this breath, let yourself really settle into your pose. So this easy sit pose seems like we're not really doing much, but allowing ourselves to like lengthen out through the spine and focusing on just like sitting up, it can be very taxing on the body. This is the very first yoga pose that ever was created, an easy sit pose. This is where yoga had originated. And back in the day, the, all they did was breathe. This was yoga. This breathing of that ujjayi, finding the breath. There was this one pose and that's it. And so somebody created the movement because they wanted to sit in this pose longer. So they decided that our muscles need strength. So let's find poses that bring strength so that we could sit in these yoga seated poses for longer. And I think that's really cool, that like little tidbit of yoga history. So many people are like, I can't do yoga, I'm not flexible. I'm like, can you breathe? <laughs> if you can breathe, you can do yoga because that's really what it's about. The eight limbs of yoga is about like higher presence, like meditation, you know, the self, it's like a journey through the self. And then movement is only like one of the asanas. So as we find the breath, let's just relax the jaw. And I just wanna offer this like fun little tidbit for today since it's May the 4th. <laughs> and since we're talking about yoga history, I felt like it was very relative to May the 4th because it's within you, I'll be with you. <laughs> okay, corny, corny uh, yoga teacher jokes aside, I love Star Wars and um, the state is like amazing. And I love like sharing all the Star Wars memes. So I hope that whatever is within you, let it be there. And maybe we can like look into it for today. So as we inhale, we can think I am, and then exhale, maybe think the force. <laughs> I am the force, whatever's within me, I am it. <laughs> If there's another word you'd like to use, feel free. Otherwise, it's about the force today. So this higher self, feeling into our bodies, letting ourselves be heavy here, sitting tall, and doing this yoga breathing, this focused, slow breathing. Maybe even thinking of a time where you felt like you had that force, that energy within you, like you felt like you were beaming about something. It might have been an emotion or a strength or something within you. Like, what did it feel like?
as we tap into our force, what came up? What was it? Did it feel good? Like, think about it for just a moment. When was the last time you thought of it? So as we move gently today throughout a few yoga postures, just remind yourself like you have the force within you. You are the force. And let's notice if our shoulders begin to round or our chin begin to come forward, let's roll them back and sit tall again, focusing on the spine. And with that length in the neck, let's bring our right ear down to the right shoulder and stretch out the left side of the neck. So this left hand can stay in your lap, reach off to the side, or you can bring the top of the hand to the base of the spine. Wherever you're at in this stretch is good. Keeping in mind, this is your yoga practice and everything that I'm saying is an offering. It's up to you to decide like what's the best fit for you for today. So if you try one thing and it's like, mm, not quite. And then you try the next and you're like, whoa, too much, you know, like Goldilocks and the three offerings. <laughs> you gotta pick the best one for you for today. As we breathe, we can send that breath to the muscle. So like relaxing that muscle as we exhale, it lengthens it, it gets a little bit longer. On that next exhale, let's release the hand. Inhale, we bring our head right back to center, lengthen through the spine. On that next exhale, left ear to the left shoulder, and we decide with our right hand. Stay in our lap, reach to the side, or top of the hand to the base of the spine. Where are you at with this? As we send our breath to that muscle, just notice how it just moves ever so slightly. As we breathe in and breathe out, we're sending our breath there, letting it stretch and feel really good. If you notice you're clenching anywhere in the body, your jaw, your forehead, you may have gone too far. Try to back off and just check in with yourself. On that next inhale, we release our hand and we bring our head right back to center, feeling into the length of the neck. And let's find a neck circle or nose circle, bringing our chin all the way down, rolling it to one side and then lifting it all the way back up, going around at least one time, maybe twice, going slow enough to where we're tapping into all sides of the neck. Like where do we need to pause? And then once you've gone around in one direction, go around in that opposite direction. And feel free to pause any place where your neck is going, yep, right there. On that next exhale, or whenever you're ready, let's just bring our head up and sit tall and feel within our neck. Take your time. And let's just kind of assess, how does our neck feel here? When we're ready, let's open up the eyes and just acclimate to the light in the room like we're yoga vampires. <laughs> Inhale, we circle the arms all the way up, reach up, exhale, bring our palms together and all the way to our heart center. Now let's try that with eyes closed. So close your eyes again. Inhale, we circle. Maybe we lift our chin just from, that's what we do. <laughs> and then exhale, bring our hands all the way down, heart center. So how did that feel? Was it weird? Try it again. Inhale, circle, reach up, press into the palms, line them up, and then exhale, bring hands to heart center. Find a few more rounds of this. And if you feel like you need your eyes open, then go for it. Anything that I'm saying, you can try it once and then decide to do it the way that you want to do it.
As we circle our arms, let's think of this. Inhale, I am. Exhale, the force. Going back to that intention. Feeling yourself scoop up all that energy and bring it right to our heart center. Inhale, we're scooping. Exhale, bring it right to our heart. One more time. Inhale, scoop. Exhale, bring it to our heart. And then this time we lean forward and our hands come down to the ground and let's push into the belly where it meets the thigh and find a very gentle forward fold. Our chin comes to the chest and our hands just gently walk out and we just find a very gentle forward fold. This is just very passive, our shoulders round, everything just kind of like is draping over the legs. Tap back into the breath. Maybe as you breathe, your elbows move. You lift up as you inhale, exhale, elbows bend. Just noticing how your body just naturally works together. Like your belly is expanding and so it needs that space and your arms will provide it for you. And that next inhale, let's walk our hands all the way back and bring our hands behind us. I have one leg extended, so I'm going to switch sides. If you have both legs crossed, let's uncross and recross the opposite direction. If you have both legs extended, maybe you take your legs a little wider. So wherever you're at is good. Come back to center, sit tall, feel within the sit pose. And then on that next exhale, let's walk our hands out. And find that forward fold again, chin to the chest, shoulders roll forward, and let yourself drape. As we breathe, our elbows move. Maybe we press into the belly where it meets the thigh. Give yourself a little more space. A millimeter makes a big difference when you're stretching a muscle. <laughs> Especially if your muscles are super tight, you sit a lot or you drive a lot or all of the above. Like there's so many reasons why our hips and our muscles and our legs are so tight. And that next inhale, let's lift up ourselves all the way and find a few more arm circles, bringing our hands all the way up and then exhale, bringing them to heart center. So if you wanna go back to that visualization of bringing in all that energy, Maybe you imagine that it has a color. So you're scooping up the beautiful energy. If you want it to go to your heart, maybe it's green. If you want it to go to your throat, maybe it's blue. Just lots and lots of different options here for energy. Where do you want it? On that next exhale, we bring our hands right back to heart center and take a deep breath here. And then let's come onto our tabletop. So bring our hands and our knees to the mat. And if you need some cushion for your knees, then go ahead and grab it. Otherwise, we're coming into a neutral tabletop, something that just feels like you're looking down, your spine is in line, even with the neck. You can tuck or untuck your toes. When we're ready, we drop the belly. And I almost like my shoulders roll back. I look up, I stick out my booty. I can really feel that sway in my back for cow. And then we round the back and we find our cat pushing through the hands, stretching out our shoulders. Inhale, find that cow again, exhale, find cat. And just roll through this a few times, warming up the spine, allowing ourselves to just kind of stretch everything out. You can even move a little bit to the left or to the right. You can sway our hips or our shoulders. Like, what do you need here? And that next exhale, let's walk our hands back and let's find whatever we were seating, sit, sitting on, seating on, and bring it so that 
like if it's a pillow, we're bringing it so that our chest can go down on the pillow. So if it's something that isn't this long, then it's a little shorter. Maybe you bring it so that it's a little bit further up. If you feel like this isn't enough, you can grab like a rolled towel or a blanket or something mm -hmm. like that. But like, let's support ourselves so that we know like my hips are kind of tight. So, you know, I need extra support. So, you know, listen to the body. You could come down and then realize you may need it. So coming down, our knees are open. And so we're finding just like a very gentle supported child's pose. Knees open, toes are kind of reaching towards one another. I like to be on my forearms. I relax my head. So my chin kind of comes to my chest. If you wanna create like a little pillow for your forehead, you can stack your fists and then just bring your forehead to your fists. You could also just rest your cheek on your support or on your little pillow fist. <laughs> and let's just breathe here. We're opening up our hips. You could even kind of wiggle the hips a little bit to settle in. If your back is arched a lot, then you might be getting a, a stretch in your back and that's good. Like as long as it feels really good, that's all that matters. If you wanna bring a little bit more focus to the hips, you can bring your left ankle in line with your left knee, creating like a half frog. And just breathe here. If you find that you try it and it's just too much, you can always come back to the supported child. Very small differences. So it's like one of them, the toes are kind of pointing towards the other. And then the other pose for frog, like my, my foot is flexed or kind of like the inner part of my foot is on the ground and my ankle is in line with my knee. On that next exhale, decide like if you went there for half frog, maybe switch sides. So point the toe, bring it in and then switch sides so that right ankle comes in line with the right knee. So that in, instep of your foot is almost touching the ground and then adjust your, your pose here. You can kind of lean back and feel it even more. If I kind of push into my forearms, my hips go back and then all of a sudden it turns everything on even more. But maybe you want this to be more restful. So like more of a child's pose. So you decide what feels best here. As we're breathing here, maybe we go back to focusing on the intention with the breath. It's a good time to kind of tap back in, so to speak. <laughs> so inhale, I am, exhale, the force. <laughs> you could also go back to both sides of frog if you wanna go for both sides, or you could stay in child's pose. So just a few more breaths here. Frog is an intense posture. We're stretching those inner thighs pretty deeply. And then try to relax your neck as much as you can. The thing about all these yoga poses, when we start working on specific parts of the body, we have to allow every other muscle in the body to relax because all of our focus is going to the part we're working on. So the inner thighs, the hips, all of that is experiencing a lot of stress. It's like pulling that muscle. It takes a lot of focus and intensity in your mind. And so for you to like release any other tension, it helps to keep that focus. So you could stay in the pose longer. And it's like that yoga uh, superpower, right? So like tapping into the breath, holding these poses, that's kind of like, I feel like our yogi superpowers. <laughs> so 
Okay, so when you're ready to come out, let's lean into those forearms and push your torso forward. We're pushing forward and then straightening out the legs behind us. Let's wiggle our bums. So intense. Let's push our hands into the mat, lifting our chest up off of our support. And let's find some opposite chest opening support. So if you have that same setup where you have like an extra little pillow or something, you could set a pillow on it. So you're lifted up just a bit. So you have a little bit of a cushion. Um, if you have blocks, you can set them in an L shape and use your blanket um, to drape over yourself if you want to. Or it might even be good for like underneath your knees. So now that we went into that very deep hip opener, let's open up the chest a little. So once you find some sort of an incline, I have it uh, with the blocks, but if you have like a pillow or something like that, just try to stack more than one in like one part of the pillow and then bring your hips to the base. And we just slowly lower down and the arms come out to the sides. Even if all you have is a rolled towel underneath your back, you will still feel a very deep chest opener. Let's go ahead and bend your knees and feet are flat on the earth. Relax your shoulders, let your chest really open and maybe even Lift up your chin and close your eyes and just feel within like that throat opening, the heart opening, like this pose is a really great chest opener. So as we find this, this beautiful pose, if you want to <clears throat> bring your feet to the outer edges of the mat and then just let your knees knock together, find broken bridge. This is optional. So if you just want your knees up towards the sky, that's awesome too. Broken bridge is a very gentle little outer hip stretch. I like it for like if I'm lying on the couch watching TV or on the floor with my kids, I might do this. Although not too much because like they'll start bouncing on my belly for some reason. It's so fishy, mommy. <laughs> like, okay. So as we lie here in this pose, maybe close your eyes and let's just begin to like tap back into that breath. Notice if your jaw is clenched, forehead clenched, try to like tuck the shoulders under and lift up that chest. So feeling that opening in the chest is the goal here. On that next exhale, if you went there with broken bridge, let's bring your knees up towards the sky and bring that left foot right in front of your left hip. So more in line. And then the right leg extends. So one knee is bent, one leg is completely flat on the ground. And then option to let your left knee open up. So this opens up the hip. If you feel like this is too deep or your back feels pinchy or anything else, bring the knee right back up. This is still getting a stretch on your back. It's still opening up the hip. My back just popped. <laughs> this is the class where we really need to focus on what do we want? Like, what does our body want? Just because I can open up my hip doesn't mean I have to. Doesn't mean that's what my body wants. So really listen. You have that force within you have that energy you've been collecting throughout this yoga series of postures like what is it that they want
On that next exhale, let's press into the left foot. And that helps you so that you can lift up that knee, that right knee up towards the sky, bringing that right foot in front of the right hip and then extending the left leg. So basically switching sides. And then decide if you'd like to open up that hip. So finding that reclined tree. And then noticing if you can do it, but does your body feel good? Just as good as if the knee was lifted. So my right hip is a bit more open than my left. So for me, my left hip didn't feel good. I kept my knee up, but my right side feels, feels awesome. So I'm gonna let my knee come down. So even though we're always like same side, you know, make sure you do the same thing on both sides. That's not always the case every day, you know? So if you do one pose on one side and you don't do it on the other, okay <laughs> it's okay to listen to your body and let yourself move in the way that your body needs for today tap back into the breath come back to that ujjayi and as we lie here maybe we are imagining that same color of energy just kind of exuding from our chest allowing that chest to open up. And if you wanna open up your arms even more, reach them up or even out to the sides to where it's like, you can feel that stretch even deeper, feel free to explore here. But if it feels good where your, hand, your palms are just like right by your side and you're like, I'm getting plenty of stretch here. This is as much as I can handle. And that's fine too. <sighs> Take your breaths, allow yourself to just sink in. And on that next exhale, let's bring that right knee up to the sky. If we went there, the left knee comes in towards the sky. And let's just gently rock our knees back and forth, maybe finding a little spinal alignment. We could even kind of lift the hips up, adjust anywhere that we might need. And maybe we stay right here, or if you'd like to explore that hip opening, a deeper hip opening, we bring the soles of the feet together, Knees open wide and we find butterfly. If you go for butterfly and your back starts feeling pinchy, you can always bring one knee up. Like you can go fly high with your butterfly in the sky. <laughs> that was a mess. <laughs> That's okay. If you went flying, go ahead and switch sides. On that next exhale, Gently roll to the right. So gently roll to your right. The right shoulder is on the ground, the right hip, and then make a little pillow with your arms and let your head rest, find a fetal position. Let's rest here for just a minute. Imagine your heart kind of dripping down to the ground, having that visual. that next exhale, use your left hand and your right forearm to gently push yourself back up. And let's remove our support and find our way onto our box with no support.
Once you find it, maybe plant your feet, lift up your hips, make sure everything is squared off and flat on the mat. Bring your arms out to the sides and just notice the difference. Like, wow, like that one little lift in the bolster really does make a huge difference. When you're ready, begin to rock your knees side to side. Let's just find some gentle twisting action here. If you'd like to take it a little bit deeper, you can extend your right leg, lift up your left knee, grab behind the left knee with the right hand and help it over to the right, finding a supine twist. Extend your left leg, I mean your left arm off to the left, and maybe we look up to the sky. As we inhale, we lift up the leg a little bit, exhale, twist. On that next exhale, that left hip comes all the way back down. We plant both of our feet to the mat, lift up the hips and move them over to the right. Extend your left leg, right knee comes into the chest. We grab behind the right knee with the left hand and help it over to the left. Extend your right arm off to the right. On that next exhale, the right hip comes all the way back down, slowly, slowly. Plant both feet down on the mat. We lift up our hips and set them back down and gently rock from side to side. And once we find our place here, let's prepare for Shavasana. So do you need anything for your Shavasana? Do you want a bolster under your knees to prop up for your hips? Do you like that open chest feeling? Do you want something underneath your chest to open it up? What do you need here? You might just want a blanket. <laughs> you might just want some socks. So find your Shavasana. Let it feel really good. It's almost as if it's like, you want to find the pose that's the most comfortable pose that you've ever had the pleasure of being in. Once you find it, let's close our eyes. Let's take some deep breaths here. Deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Ah. Deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Ah. On this next one, imagine that belly, the chest, everything getting nice and big, deep inhale. And then as we exhale, the belly, the chest, everything gets really small and just kind of gets pushed into the ground. It's like gravity is giving you a nice big hug. Last time on our own. <sighs> Let go of all the tension. Let go of all the stress. Anything that might be bubbling up. This isn't for Shavasana. Shavasana is to rest before you go back to life. So as we lie here in Shavasana, remind ourselves, this is the most important part of our yoga practice. This is where we just kind of like exist. We can mindfully be here and be present in our final resting posture. It's arguably the hardest of all the postures because the only thing you have to do is clear your mind. And in order to do that, it's, like very hard. <laughs> In order to do that, you have to stop thinking, which is really hard. So as we clear our minds, let's imagine a door. Okay, so we're in a room, there's a door, maybe there's two doors. There's one on the right, one on the left. And that yoga door is holding back all your thoughts. So it's like a clear room. 
And as you breathe, maybe you focus on a color like that green for the heart energy, the purple for maybe like crown chakra or third eye chakra. Where do you want the energy? As we inhale, that energy color gets brighter and more, you know, like bold, bright. Exhale, it gets darker, dim, almost black. So we breathe life and energy into this room and we're focused here in Shavasana. If our little thoughts start to trickle in, these are, I gotta do this after the practice. I gotta have this happening. I'm thirsty, I need to do this. All of these little thoughts that trickle in, let them trickle right back out. Don't pass any judgment on yourself. Just understand that our brain is always trying to make us work harder. <laughs> And as you focus here in your beautiful yoga room and your Shavasana, remind yourself this is your Shavasana. Like you get to be here and be present and like reap all of these beautiful benefits of your yoga practice. We'll spend the next few minutes in silence for your Shavasana.
begin to tap back into the breath. Take a deep inhale and an exhale. Wiggle fingers and toes. Circle out wrists and ankles. Take both hands overhead for a full body stretch. Let it feel sweet. Roll to one side. Whenever you're ready, begin to push yourself up and find a comfortable seated posture. Bring your hands to your heart center. Tuck your chin and close your eyes and just thank yourself for showing up today and being present with your amazing energy. Awesome job. Bring your thumbs to third eye. The divine light within your, within me honors the divine light within you. Thank you for practicing with me today. Yay. <laughs> All right, friends, or friend, <laughs> we lost them. Um, all right, so tomorrow, just as a reminder, it's the restorative yoga. Um, no class on Thursday. If you have any questions, send me an email. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.